So the team behind React Router released version 6.4 a few weeks ago, and they've introduced some exciting new features that you can already find in Remix, the web framework from the same guys. Side note, in case you missed it, Remix was just acquired by Shopify, so it'll be great to see it continue to improve and develop with the backing of a big player like that. I did a Remix tutorial a little while ago, and we'll link to that video in the description below. The feature that I'm excited about playing with most in React Router is the loader pattern. So let's take a look. So I've created a, an example app to use for this demonstration. I've created it with Vite. Uh, I'm using a lot of the template that comes with creating a new Vite app for React. You can see I've just pulled out most of the demo stuff and I have a link to a user's page in here. So this is a really contrived example. It's not a real app, but it's just, to, uh, it's just for demonstration purposes to show you exactly how this all works. So I'm gonna click on user's page and you can see there was a quick loading transition there. And we're now on the user's page and I've got a list of users. And if I click on Daryl, for example, it says loading user, and then it lists Daryl, his age, favorite color. I can say back to users. It says loading users, and we go back to the users page. So let's have a quick look at the code for this. So in the main file of our app, I've set up the routing. So I've imported from React Router DOM, create browser router, create routes from elements, router provider, and route. Version 6.4 of React Router has uh, the actual route set up using a JavaScript object. If you want to continue to use JSX, like I have done here, you need to use create routes from elements function, which then um, allows you to pass in JSX routes. So I've got a route, um, I'm using nested routing, which is new from React Router 6. As I'm inside of the main path, I have a my app um, file, which will go to here. So inside the app component, you can see we have the app, which has the React logo, the title, and our link to users page. So I link to the users page here, you can see that's rendered uh, just below the app. And then inside of that, I can render the users page itself. And with a, with a path to the user ID, I can render a user page. Um, so if we go into uh, users to start with, so we got a users page. Inside of here, I have a uh, component, users page, and I'm using a hook. So I have a use get users here, which, um, we're not using a real API, I'm just mocking out the data using an object. And um, as I said, this is a contrived example here. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, have a hook here. I've got a loading and set loading for state. I've got users and set users in state. Um, and I have this uh, function here called load users, which um, I have this await, uh, await timeout function. And that's just to mimic a network request, right? So um, when you're making a network request, generally the response isn't immediate. So you do have some sort of loading. So this is to allow us to deal with that loading. Then we're just gonna set users and then change loading defaults. Um, so if we go inside of the component, you can see we call the hook and we call return users and loading, or we actually destructure users and loading from the result of that hook. We say here of loading, then we're gonna return loading users. So you can see that in action. If I go back to home and go to users page, you can see briefly, it says loading users. Um, so I can change this to, let's say, change it to one second so you can see that more clearly. And then it says loading users for one second. Okay, so that's just to mimic a network request. So I'll change that back to 300 for now. Now, you can see if we click on, let's go back to here, we can click on a link and the link comes from React Router DOM. If we click on a link, the link will, we're giving it a two value of the user ID and inside of the route here, <clears throat> we're taking that path user ID and we're rendering the user page element. So when a user clicks on uh, a user, they go into user page. And here we have use params from React Router DOM. We're taking the user ID, we're passing it into this use get user hook, which does something very similar to use get users. You can see it has the users object here again, or the users array here again. Um, and this is has a bit more data, right? So. Typically you might render a list of items and you only need the ID and the name for that list. And then when you, you know, click into it, it then pulls in all the rest of the data for that user. Uh, so that's what I'm uh, mimicking here. And I have the same await timeout function here just to um, mimic a network request with a delay. Um, so inside the user page, uh, we have if loading, loading user. I have if no user exists, then return user not found. Um, and then I can render user details. So again, I have link back to users here. I have username, and then again, just uh, 
you know, another con contrived example, but just to show you um, how this works with the new version, I have a component called age where I'm just passing in user age. And inside of this age component, I'm literally just taking the age, which is a number, and I'm rendering it in a p tag. Okay, so that's the pattern on how it works. And you can see, particularly here in the user page, we've got to do a couple of if statements. We want to wait for loading to finish. Uh, we want to make sure that there's a user. Um, now, if I didn't do this, you'll see TypeScript starts complaining, going, well, we don't, you know, user is possibly undefined. If they put a, um, a bad user ID in the, in the URL and the user doesn't exist, you need to handle that somehow. Um, so we're just handling that this way. Um, but if I wasn't to have loading and no user, then I would have to then do some uh, optional chaining perhaps to make sure that the user exists, but then that's not exactly the UI that you wanna show, is it? Um, so using this new pattern that I'm about to show you with React Router 6.4, um, we can actually load the data in before the page renders. So you don't need to even worry about inside of this component, loading, making sure the data exists, et cetera. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is create a, a loader. And a loader is required by React Router to actually load the data in prior to the render, prior to the initial render, I should say. So during navigation, it will call this loader, it will load the data in and pass it into the component. So you can create a loader inside of the user page or the users page. Uh, I'm, I like to keep my network requests separate, so I'm gonna create a, a loader file um, inside of users page. I wanna take some of this stuff from use get users. So I'm replacing this use get users hook. So I'll copy this. So I'm gonna start by importing JSON um, from React Writer DOM. I'm going to import some TypeScript stuff. I'm gonna paste in users. Uh, I'm gonna copy this um, little timeout function. I want that in there as well. And then I need to just export a function called loader. Inside of this loader function, I can create a get users uh, function it's inside. And inside get users, I'm gonna say await, um, await timeout. And we'll go 300 again. And then I'm simply gonna return users. And then what I wanna do is I'll say users equals get users. Need to await that, and then uh, return it as JSON. And this needs to be a sync for that to work. And I'm not actually using that, am I? No. Okay. So now, if I go into my main uh, routes file. Um, I want to actually start by making sure this is exported. So export from loader. And in my main rights file, I'm going to import loader as users loader. And then for users page, I can just pass in the loader. So users loader. Oh, that path is incorrect there, okay. And I don't need that either. So I've passed in a loader here into the route. And now if I go into users page, users page, I don't need uh, this loading. And I don't need this hook. What I do need is to import a hook from React Router DOM called use loader data. I'm gonna say users, destructure that from the results, use loader data. And TypeScript is complaining because currently there isn't a great way to type the loader data itself. So what you need to do is inside of here, I'm gonna create a type called loader data. It's just an object with users and I need a types file. And I have some types here that I created. So I have a user type and then the users, as you can see, doesn't contain all the data. So I've just picked name and ID from that. So we will import type users from types. Here we can say users. 
and say as loader. Data. So you uh, need to cast the result of uh, use loader data um, as loader data um, because right now it's not a very well typed. So if we now have a look at our app and we go back to home, just give that a refresh, click on users page. Now you can see I go back to home and click on users page and notice what happens. There's no loading spinner. The data is loaded during the transition. And now we don't need to worry about whether the data exists or whether the um, data is loading. Um, you can also pass in an error component that handles if the data doesn't actually exist after it's loaded. So we're not gonna do that in this example, but that's just something to bear in mind. Um, but yeah, you can see I click on users page and we load the users page without any loading. So let's set up um, user as well. So I can now delete this use get users hook because I don't need that. So move that to trash. And I'm gonna go into the user page and I'm gonna create a loader in here. Um, so let's export const loader. Create that uh, an async function. And up here, I'm gonna import JSON from React Writer DOM. And I want to also use the hook and copy across this await timeout function and users. And I'm gonna get a get user function. Say await, await timeout, and we'll do the same thing, 300 milliseconds. And then I do return users.find user, and then user.id equals, and then we need params in here. Our loader will take params directly from the router itself. I'll show you that how that works. We'll say params.userid. Const user equals get user. Um, we need to await that. And we're going to return JSON user. And to type params, we're going to need to import type loader function args from React Writer DOM. So we'll just give that a type and we'll save that. Now let's go back to our main and we want to import, uh, actually, let's make sure that we export that from the user page. So export. From loader, and we can go into main, just here, and I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to import the loader as user loader. And now here you can see we do loader equals user loader, uh, spell that correctly. And because we have a path of user ID, it knows that we're getting params. Uh, and so that's how we're able to destructure the params off the arguments that are given to the actual loader. Um, so I go into the user page, which is here. I don't need uh, params here. I don't need this hook. I just need use loader data from React Router DOM. And I say user equals use loader data. And I don't need that hook there. I don't need loading. Um, I don't need this for now, but I um, it's probably important to have an error handler so that if user doesn't exist for some reason, um, again, let's say they pass in the wrong uh, parameter that you want to handle that correctly. And I will type loader data equals, and I want to import type user from my types file, which I think is there. So I'll say user, user. as loader data. So again, let's make sure that that works correctly. So I go back to home, I've got users page, no transition. And then I click on the user, again, no transition, no loading spinner. Um, so that works really nicely. Um, now you might be wondering, well, what happens if my network request is slow, right? Um, so this is something that you need to bear in mind, right? So if your network request is slow, if your API is a bit slow to respond, you're gonna have this minor delay during the navigation. So I will show you an example of what happens if it's slower. So this is the user's page loader. So if I change this to say one whole second 
and then we go back to home. So navigate to the users page, I click and nothing happens for one second. So the user experience there isn't ideal. So I guess you wanna ask yourself if uh, you should always reach for this pattern when using React Router. And the answer is, I don't know. If you make an API request that has a slow response time, as we just showed you, then that might not work as well for you. However, React Router docs do have a section on dealing with deferred data. So what this allows you to do is to use suspense to render a fallback component, such as a loading spinner or some text in the part of your component that needs the data. So your page will load and the component will handle waiting for the data to come in. If you do want to give that a go, there's an example of how you can do that in the docs. But what I'm going to show you now is how you can implement one of their other suggestions, which is to use a global transition loading component. You might have a loading spinner. In this example, I'm just going to use some text. If I go into main, I've got my routes here. And on the top level, I'm going to create a component called app wrapper and export that. And I'm going to import a use navigation hook and I'm going to import an outlet component. Outlet component from React Router DOM. So inside of this component, I'm going to destructure the state of the navigation from the use navigation hook. And I'm going to say if state equals loading, I want to return loading like that. And in this case, you might return a full page loading spinner, for example. Otherwise, I want to return the outlet component. And what outlet does is it just basically renders all the child components of this particular route. Um, so to use this, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our main file. And around this route, I'm going to wrap another route. And I'm going to simply say element equals, and I want to import um, app wrapper. App wrapper. And so we go back to, let's say we want to, uh, we still have one second for the users page. So let's have a look and see how that works now. So we go back to home and I click on users page. And now we have this loading spinner that comes up there. So you're only handling loading one time uh, in that location. You're not doing it in every single component. Um, but as I said, there are different there are different scenarios where you might want to actually render the page first and then wait for the data to come in. So you can use that deferred data pattern using React Suspense uh, if you want to do it that way. Um, so one more thing I wanted to show you before we wrap this up is, and I'll change this back to um, 300 milliseconds. Um, so that still works for the users. And another neat thing about the, uh, the use loader data pattern is that you can actually access it anywhere within the tree. So if you have a component that renders another component that renders another component, you want to pass that data all the way down from the top level. Um, that's called prop drilling. So there are different ways to avoid prop drilling, but what you can do here um, is you can, um, let's see, we'll go into the age component. And uh, so if you look at the uh, user page, you can see that we have an age component. We're passing the user age in here. So we can delete that prop and save that. And what we can do here is import use loader data from React Router DOM. And I can just pull the user in directly here. So it doesn't have to be top level. It doesn't have to be the component that's directly rendered by the route. So I can say, and I'll just, I'm just doing as any here just for um, simplicity for the example. Um, so I can say uh, user, and then instead of using a prop, which as I said, it could be passed down several levels. I'm gonna save that. And um, I also need to change the type. So I don't need a prop here. Save that so we don't have any errors. And if we go back to the um, component, I'll give it a refresh just so we know. So I click on Daryl here and you can see that the age still renders. So here we go, we have his age that's passed in and we haven't passed any props down. We haven't done any prop drilling. We're just using the data that's passed into the, uh, to the route itself. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, if that's something you're interested in trying, if you don't like the pattern, if you don't like the pattern, uh, just let me know in the comments below. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you've found it useful. If you have, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.